I have decided that I am going to start a new project. And this project revolves around a mixing board. This mixing board. This is a Soundcraft Series 200B board. And the problem is, the problem is, is that there is no power supply with this. It's an external power supply that plugs in right here. I've just unscrewed the connector here, but I'm going to have to build another external power supply and uh, get a new connector. I can't find connectors for this that fit this one, so I'll get new ones and I will produce this new power supply. Uh, since I don't have the old power supply, I have to do some research on my own and figure out what I need uh, in terms of voltages and such to an amperage to make this board work properly. And it actually has a couple different rails. It has two 17 volt rails, plus and minus 17, uh, 48 plus 48 for phantom power, and also it has a, uh, a zero voltage uh, reference voltage is what I've heard it called. And I wasn't sure about the amps because uh, the schematics I found for it didn't really say what the uh, amps are. So I'm I'm going on the high side. I'm going to say that it's going to take the the uh, plus minus 17 are going to take about two amps each for total four amps which is probably a little high. I think uh, two amps, two and a half amps is probably more realistic. Uh, but I emailed someone who has a little bit more knowledge about these things and they said, you know, go a little higher, it's okay. Um, all right, well, that's the project. And I don't know anything about power supplies, really. And I didn't know where to start, so when I started doing some research on the internet, I found a lot of DIY kits online that allow you to build power supplies. So I bought uh, this Jameco power supply kit that I put together myself. Uh, it actually can give me the plus minus 17 that I need for the Soundcraft, but it's just, it only goes up to one amp, so it really will not give me enough amperage. But uh, I figured, Starting with this, I would learn about how power supplies work, which I did, and, well, to an extent, I'm not an expert by any means, but I got to learn the basics of power supplies and how they work, and the first thing I found was that was needed was uh, a transformer. I just picked up this transformer at uh, Radio Shack for like 10 bucks, and the Jameco kit here for, uh, I think it was like $17 online through Amazon. And one thing I, I did do, I took apart an old uh, power inverter that I had, and it had these really big, high-powered, uh, high-amperage diodes, and I used these in place of the, uh, the diodes that came with the kit. And again, I, I don't know if, it, if I connected this to the Soundcraft, if it would actually give me enough amperage, if something would burn out, but I had it in my mind that maybe I could try. I haven't tried yet, not sure if I'm going to or not, but I put this together. This is a 12 volt uh, secondary uh, transformer, which uh, gives me enough voltage that if I, if, I crank, if I crank this thing up all the way, I can get 17 volts, plus minus 17 out of this. But uh, it works, it was more of a proof concept. I, uh, I fired it up, I got plus minus 17. I, again, I don't know if I'm going to try this out on the board or not. I, I don't know if that's really worth it. But I did learn about power supplies. I built my first power supply. Got some parts at uh, Radio Shack that I, I may or may not reuse for uh, for uh, the actual power supply build. But I have a power button, a rocker switch, and a, a, a fuse. I don't know what you call it. It's a fuse connector, fuse holder. And uh, yeah, so it came out, it, it came together well. Everything worked the first time through, so I feel with that I had enough. Uh, I learned enough that I can go ahead and make the power supply for the Soundcraft board. Now, 
my original idea was to create my own schematic and etch my own circuit board, which is quite a bit of work. And I was using some online schematics that I found that were similar, or I actually had the uh, original Soundcraft uh, schematic as well. Uh, and I was through some online schematics that I found in the Soundcraft schematic, I was coming up with my own. And I kept on going to a particular website and finding their schematic was the most useful. And after a while I said, why am I going to recreate something that another website has actually created? And for 15 bucks, uh, this company, I think it's JL, JLM Audio, um, I hope I got that right, uh, they, uh, they had uh, an audio uh, power supply and uh, I could buy the whole kit or I could buy it assembled or even they sold just the, uh, the PCB, the printed circuit board, um, individually also. So since this is you know, the journey is, uh, you know, part of the, the most important part to me, you know, having the final product is good too, but just learning and, and creating and, and, uh, learning about the parts, the individual little pieces, you know, is important to me. So I decided, okay, I'll, I, I know how the schematic works. I, I could go through the trouble of making my own PCB. Uh, but instead I, I skipped that part. I bought this JLM, uh, PCB. And uh, it was actually from a company in, in Australia and got here pretty quick. Chipping was uh, a little bit, 15 bucks or so. Um, and then I sourced out my own parts for it. Uh, one thing I found about sourcing out parts for any project, like in companies like Mouser or DigiKey or something like that, is they have, for most of their parts, they just have a million different options. And you know, a lot of times I've, in the past, I've picked the wrong part and I, it comes here and shows up my house and I go, well, this isn't what I expected to be. It doesn't fit. I'm going to have to find something else. So again, that's part of the learning experience, you know, getting wrong parts and understanding why it's the wrong part and, um, you know, getting, getting the ones that uh, are correct and, you know, looking at all the different options there are when you're, when you're uh, ordering these parts, you know, you, it, it forces me to, to learn all there is about these parts uh the, you know there's so many different ratings and you know uh just different things that I, I wouldn't normally think about and uh you know you can't just go buy a capacitor there's all different types of capacitors all different types of resistors different sizes different wattage ratings so i went ahead and i think i ordered everything i needed from mouser and i have i have uh, uh finally gotten today the uh the box with the parts I ordered and, and we'll go through those and and hopefully I can explain what everything is. I also have received the PCB that I ordered and I can I can probably go over that too as well. Right. Okay well I got some parts here so we'll kind of look at them um, or at least some of them make some sense out of what we have. So the first thing I got was this PCB from JLM Audio and it is tiny. I was I was really shocked how small this was. Uh, he has got a lot of pictures on his website, and you know they're all close up and and uh, just didn't get the impression that it was this small. But it's tiny. It's actually about the same size as the uh, as the uh, James the Jameco PCB that I bought. And this one actually has more rails. The Jameco had two rails, plus, minus, well, and the uh, zero reference, so three. This one has, uh, let's see, this one has a, uh, a zero plus 48, uh, V1 plus V2 plus V1 minus V2 minus, so it's got six rails, as opposed to three rails. So here's here's the parts I got out from Mouser today. Um, no, this isn't this isn't going to be terribly interesting, but uh, there's voltage regulators, lots of capacitors, lots of capacitors. These are pretty big capacitors. Uh, we got some resistors. Yeah, these are some variable resistors. So you can actually adjust. That's the that's the one you. Uh, 
when you adjust uh, the voltage at your rails, you'll get different voltages out according to how you uh, adjust these uh, variable resistors. And this here is my bridge rectifier. Let's take a look at this. What do we have here? Wow, this thing is big. So this takes, this probably says right on here, this takes uh, AC in the middle pins and gives us a plus and minus DC on the uh, on the outer pins. Yeah, this is the 6 amp version I, I ended up getting. So uh, this looks pretty meaty, I'm sure. Uh, looks like I could even probably hook up a uh, heat sink to it if I need. That's what I have so far. I don't, I don't have a transformer for this particular build. I'm going to order... Um, how do you say Tor toroidal? Toroidal? I'm gonna have to look up how to say that word. Uh, a round transformer, and uh, it's gonna be an eight, uh, looking at an 18 volt, 200 volt amp uh, transformer. That should give me plenty, plenty of juice for this project. I am going to start assembling my PCB, soldering components onto this. I have the schematic from the JLM Audio website and also the, uh, the parts list. So hopefully everything will, uh, that I bought will match. On my laptop over there I have the build thread from the JLM Audio uh, forum. And this is called, the, actually I didn't mention this yet, but I think it's called the Power Station uh, is the five rail uh, version. Uh, the uh, JLM uh, power supply kit, uh, right? And they also have they also have other versions. They have the ACDC kit, which is uh, three rail, which I probably could have used. I think that one had uh, I could do a plus minus and then a forty eight also. But again, this one has the uh, has the larger holes for a larger bridge rectifier, which uh, which I needed. Uh, I got my multimeter and my soldering iron and my helping hands and a little uh, looking glass here. And you know what really helps is a bright light. Having a good bright light when you're working on stuff like this really helps. So you can see what you're actually doing. All right. And having, having me put this together isn't watching me put this together probably isn't going to be very exciting but you know, I can show the tools that I'm using in my approach. And I think the first thing that the, the website says is to uh, start with the resistors. You know, it makes sense. Start with the smaller components and work your way to the bigger ones. So, all right, here we go. Okay, well, I got all the resistors on there. And I measured them as I went along. Some of them, they're supposed to be 120 ohms, were actually 140 ohms. And the one that was really small, I think it was uh, was like 10 ohms or something. One of them was small, it was a little bit more also. Maybe it was this one here. But they're all in. And uh, we'll move on to the, I think we'll move on to the diodes next. All right. All right, now I have all of the duds in. I left out four here because the bridge rectifier is going to replace those.